Thank you so much. Last week, my wife Anne and I were out shopping for some clothes appropriate to this momentous occasion. And uh, as I checked out the accessories, I told the salesman, I want to look good because I'm being inducted into the South Dakota Hall of Fame. And the salesman responded, for what? <laughs> and I was set back. I was stunned. I was flummoxed because I didn't know what to respond. I look at Ann, and Ann shrugged her shoulders. And said, look at me. <coughs> and uh, you know what? That, that, that's a valid question. You know, was I a, a great athlete that he hadn't heard of? Was I a uh, Nobel laureate, perhaps? But uh, finally I responded, I don't know, you know. <laughs> I forgot to ask. <laughs> Wombly, South Dakota the village of my birth on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation is perhaps a little over four hours from here. Head down I-90 to Kadoka, and at Kadoka takes 73 south, and after a while you get into the village of Wambli. I was born there in 1935 in a small house my father had built. My father was a wonderful man by the name of John Guy Trimble, who was from uh, Iowa, down the road uh, in uh, Onawa, Iowa. And my mother, he was a white man, and my mother was a Lakota woman. And together they had 13 children. There were seven girls and six boys in that order, and I was 13th. <laughs> As I said, it's about four hours from here, a little over, but it took me 78 years to get here. And it isn't that I would got lost along the way, it's as I tend to do. And it wasn't that I was looking for this place of honor, because how can anyone even aspire to this? I'm speaking metaphorically, of course, because life, but life is a journey and it's a long journey. And it was a good and interesting journey. And many people helped me along the way, not the least of whom have been my mother and father, although he died uh, a month before I was two years old. And my, the siblings in my family have raised me, basically. I want to call attention to part of my family who are here. I have a whole bunch of nephews and nieces out there. I'm the last in my generation, so I have no siblings here. But I want to call attention to Florence Hogan, who is my niece, and Florence is the widow of Marvis Hogan, who has the honor of a, a, a spot in the Hall of Fame here and her sister, my other niece, Doris Roth, and Phil Hogan, who I have no question will be here in this Hall of Fame in several years from the accomplish accomplishments. I was uh, placed 
in a boarding school, an Indian boarding school, when I was four years old. And my mother had to do that. And because she was being urged and pushed to put me up for adoption. And the, the pressure on her was so great that she thought that I would be better off being placed in that boarding school, which was Holy Rosary Mission on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. And I spent in my entire youth there nine months of the year in that boarding school. And th over those years, I met wonderful people, and I learned great things, although it was very, very difficult for a young man, especially four years old. And I recall when he, uh, I was taken there, and uh, my mother, uh, as she went around enrolling as children, or me and uh, another brother, I stayed close to her. I held her. And then my mother uh, told me that, uh, or my brother told me that he had something to show me very special in the playroom. And he took me into the playroom. And when I was in there, it hit me. Oh, my God. And I ran back out. And she was gone. And he held me to keep me from running after the car that took her away. So that was my introduction. But again, I have no regrets because I learned so much in that school and I want to give special thanks to the Jesuit fathers and scholastics who ran the school for what I learned, which found, uh, provided a basis for my learning thereafter through the University of South Dakota. And I want to give thanks to the University of South Dakota as well for the wonderful education I got there. And I am in, involved in them. Special thanks goes to Ted Munster and his wife, Karen. Ted sponsored me uh, for this, or nominated me and sponsored me. And uh, he also found it took liberty of uh, suggesting that I occupy certain positions. So he brought me back into the University of South Dakota to head up the Institute for American Indian Studies. And uh, it's one of those things you say, thank you, Ted, I think. And, uh, but I, I spent some time there, and I, I just want to give special thanks to him. But again, for whatever it was, for which you are honoring me today among this group of wonderful, accomplished men and women. I am grateful indeed. We all tend to borrow or steal words of knowledge and meaning, and we take them from great men and women who inspire us. One of the great people who have inspired me through life was a man named John Nyhart. He's the Poet Laureate of Nebraska in perpetuity. In 1975, he was inducted into the Nebraska Hall of Fame and named State Poet Laureate in Perpetuity. And a large bronze bust of his image was unveiled in the Capitol Rotunda, Rotunda in Lincoln. And at that point, he spoke his acceptance of the honor and ended with these words, you have made me happy beyond laughter and humble beyond tears. And those are my words because those are exactly how I feel. And I thank you so much. Thank you.